February in Toronto isn't the most photographic time of year, especially if you're toting a camera ideal for wildlife or sports. And that's why instead of doing a full review of the new Olympus EM1 Mark III, I've decided to compare it to my trusty full-frame Sony a7 III. I want to be convinced that Olympus is smart for sticking to their Micro Four Thirds guns, and that even in 2020, with the exceptional craze over full frame, that there's still a case to be made for Micro Four Thirds. This is now the third iteration of the popular EM1 series cameras from Olympus, but what makes this model different is that it now sports the same processing power as its big brother, the EM1X, which we did a full review of, and I will put a link to that in the description below. Now, some of you may be tempted to say that full frame is objectively better, but I want to challenge you by saying, better at what and in what way? And this is something that I want to explore in this video. And we're going to start with some of the compelling reasons why Micro Four Thirds is still a very strong format, and I think I have a few. So let's begin. Now you've probably heard that Micro Four Thirds is cheaper than full frame, but not exactly because the body of the new EM1 Mark III is the exact same price right now as the Sony a7 III. And when you pair both cameras with an f4 mid-range zoom, you land at surprisingly the exact same cost. But let's consider for a minute that Olympus has always been a favorite of wildlife photographers. And if you're after that 600 millimeter full frame sort of focal length, then you only need a 300 millimeter lens with a Micro Four Thirds system. And an F4 300 millimeter for Olympus, well, that weighs less than half that of a full frame 600 millimeter equivalent. But here's the real kicker, is that it costs only 20% of a full frame 600 millimeter lens. And that, my friends, puts it well within reach of people who are not retired dentists. And that, I think, is probably the number one most compelling reason why Micro Four Thirds is still a very, very important system today. Physics favors a smaller sensor. In Micro Four Thirds, it has a lot more room to move around, but it also has less distance to travel from its fulcrum. And Olympus claims that the EM1 Mark III has 7.5 stops of stability when paired with an optically stabilized lens. For the same sort of thing with Sony, we get five stops. Now, when I took the cameras out and shot handheld, I was able to see that the Olympus indeed did perform four stops better than the a7 III. But most remarkably is that I was able to get a reasonably sharp image handheld at two second exposure time with the EM1 Mark III. And that, my friends, is B for bananas. When it came time to shoot video, I was actually quite surprised with the stability of the Sony. Um, it was a little herky-jerky, but overall, considering the fact that I had it pressed to my face and I was just twisting my torso, it was not that bad as far as stability is concerned. But the EM1 Mark III still outperformed it, and it, at times it actually kind of looked like I was using a fluid head. And that's something I've actually never seen from any type of video camera before, so this is super, super impressive. Additionally, the rolling shutter on the a7 III can be laughable at times, and the EM1 has virtually none. And this makes the EM1 a very strong contender for fast and light documentary storytelling. This is where Micro Four Thirds gets a lot of hate mail. But I caution you to not throw the baby out with the bathwater here because I'm going to give you three good reasons why the EM1 is still a very solid performer when it comes to depth of field and resolution. Now, the first being, of course, when we talk about resolution, is that most of our photos are ending up online, they're on Instagram, in which case, guys, eight megapixels is plenty. Um, and if we were to take both of these images, 20 megapixels from the EM1 and 24 megapixels from the a7 III, and we blow them up to sort of one meter high uh, prints, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference visually. Where resolution tends to play out more is in post-production. So if you're doing uh, high-end fashion work, skin work, uh, architecture work, where you're going in and you're manipulating a lot of things in Photoshop and doing detail work, that extra resolution gives you a lot more detail to work with and make more realistic edits. But if you're just kind of doing Lightroom, Capture One kind of stuff, then 20 megapixels is plenty. Now, if you want higher resolutions, well, Olympus actually has the fix for that. They do this by exploiting the in-body image stabilization. It has two high resolution modes, one handheld, which it gives you a 50 megapixel image. And if you pop it on a tripod, you get 80 megapixels. Now, I thought this was a gimmick at first, but when I tried this and I held it against the a7 III, it actually holds up quite well and the math checks out. When it comes to depth of field, yes, 
Full frame cameras have that romantic, super shallow depth of field. But there are times, particularly when shooting interviews, where it's very difficult on a full frame camera to keep both the nose and the ears in focus on your subject uh, when shooting at sort of more wide open f-stops. And so typically we have to shoot somewhere around 5, 6, sometimes you know, f8, uh, depending on the focal length that we're using. Now, Micro Four Thirds cameras will allow you to shoot much more wide open, letting in a lot more light, but retaining that focus. And this is one of the primary reasons why documentary video cameras are still one inch or smaller sensors, um, because it allows a lot more control, especially when shooting subjects. Olympus claims that the EM1 Mark III has the same quality autofocus face tracking as Sony. Them's fighting words. So let's see how it all worked out. There is no doubt that the EM1 AF is very, very good and very responsive. Without reference, I would say that it's among the best. When compared to the Sony, it's actually not far off. Sony still latches on quicker and in more challenging lighting like this backlit situation, but only by a difference of a few frames. When it comes to shooting interviews where subjects can rock around or lurch forward like this jerk, both cameras keep it locked on super solid. I was impressed by both cameras. This is where things slip a little for the EM1. Now, while the camera does have an amazing IBIS that allows you to shoot four stops slower shutter speed and that will allow more light to come in, when it comes to higher ISOs, it just doesn't have the performance that larger photo sites do of a full frame camera. At 3200, it looks surprisingly good in photos, and I'd even say that 6400 would be usable in some occasions. But when shooting video, well, it was no contest. Usable up to 3200, whereas the a7 III was clean at 6400 in a way that the EM1 is at 800. The EM1 also tops out at only 6400, making low light performance not the most compelling reason to buy this camera. One last thing about Micro Four Thirds is that its camera body design is often smaller and lighter than full frame cameras. Now, when it comes to this camera, it's not really any different than the a7 III, with one big exception, and that is the hand grip on here. I have never in my entire life picked up a camera with a hand grip like this. It is incredible. Um, it is the only camera that I can confidently say that I can shoot one-handed for an extended period of time with absolutely no hand strain. And uh, another bonus as well is that the hot buttons on the front here, and most cameras that have this feature, I end up accidentally hitting them and so I have to turn those functions off. With this camera, I never accidentally hit them once. It's very, very comfortable, very strong in the hand, feels like a real handle. And that is a big plus on my mind for this camera. I've never experienced anything like this before. In summary, the EM1 Mark III offers wildlife, travel, and documentary shooters a really great compact handheld camera system for a fraction of the cost of full frame. And for action shooters, having the ability to have a slightly wider depth of field means that those long lens shots have a better chance of actually being in focus. Now, when it comes to portrait architecture or commercial work, I would still stick with an APS-C full frame or even a medium format camera. But what the EM1 Mark III does well, it does exceptionally well. And that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Please, as always, subscribe to our channel. Find us on all the interweb things. Comment in the comment section because that's the only way the algorithm works so everybody gets to see this video. And that's all for now. Thanks so much for watching. Go out there, have some fun, and happy shooting.